Is there a God? What is the meaning of life? Where do we go when we die? These are the types of questions which have enamored and perplexed humans across generations and locales. But perhaps no query holds a place of prominence on this list, quite like the age-old question, are we alone in the universe? For many people, it seems impossible that Earth would be the only place in the universe with intelligent life. Just think about it. There may be more Earth-like planets out there than grains of sand on our entire planet. But if there is other intelligent life out there, if aliens do exist, how could they contact us? And if they did, how could we be expected to understand each other across what would presumably be vastly different languages or modes of communication? There is, of course, at least one universal language in the universe, the language of mathematics. Perhaps aliens could use math in an attempt to communicate with human beings on Earth. Perhaps they already have. Today's video is sponsored by Babbel, the number one language learning app in the world, offering 14 different languages for you to learn. I really love traveling to different countries, and I plan on going on a vacation somewhere in Latin America. For this reason, I find Babbel really useful for learning Spanish. Although I've studied Spanish in school, I barely remember anything. What's great about the app is that they have specific courses for different needs. If you're like me and want to travel, they have a precise course entirely focused on traveling and sightseeing in Latin America. It focuses on the essential things you'll need in real life, like hotel reservations, ordering food, shopping, asking for directions, and simply getting around. Unlike most other learning apps, Babbel has no ads, and it focuses entirely on learning. Head over to my link below right now to get 50% off of six months for a limited time only. So don't wait and start learning. Gracias. Disfruta el video. On the morning of January 19th, 1966, an Australian banana farmer named George Pedley was driving his tractor, as he did every morning, through the Horseshoe Lagoon region of Tully, Australia. Suddenly, a loud hissing noise pierced the air, nearly knocking Pedley from his seat. Frightened, he watched as a strange gray object, some 25 feet long, rose from the lagoon and sped off into the sky. Examining the area from which the object had appeared, Pedley found a circle of flattened reeds he described as a nest. Oddly, the reeds were not simply bent over, but physically uprooted from the lagoon, somehow floating on the surface of the water in a swirling mat. The next day, Pedley brought the police to the site to show them what he'd found. In no time, the local press had taken note of the story. Sightseers and curious onlookers flocked to the area, discovering as they did, a number of similar nests scattered throughout the lagoon. The mystery would go unexplained, though even though the Royal Australian Air Force noted that during inquiries, a number of local residents stated that the reported nests are fairly common during the onset of the wet season. Incredibly, this story was not even the most bizarre of its kind in Australia that year. Months later, over 200 staff and students at a high school in Melbourne witnessed a large disc about twice the size of a car, not entirely dissimilar to that described by Pedley, flying through the sky outside their school in the middle of the day. Before flying off and disappearing into the horizon, the disc landed on the ground in the distance. When students ran to the spot, they found a large circle of flattened and twisted grass, what Pedley may have described as a nest. More bizarre though, was what happened in the days and weeks that followed the incident. According to witnesses, the area where the disc had landed was immediately cordoned off by the military. Many students were visited by men in black suits who warned them against speaking about the incident. In fact, the school's headmaster was apparently so scared and disturbed that he told students they would be severely punished and staff that they would be fired if they talked about the incident at all. 
Even the local media's footage covering the story has mysteriously disappeared from their archives. If there was a cover-up, it worked. The story faded from memory and the world went on, pleasantly unaware of Australia's mysterious nests. That is, until the late 1970s, when a series of strange circular patterns started to appear in farmers' fields across the countryside in England, eerily similar to those in Australia a decade before. These mysterious crop circles, as they came to be known, appeared overnight, often times spanning many hundreds of feet in diameter. Shocking and inexplicable as they were, this was not the first time they had been seen on Earth. As far back as the 1600s, art depicting circles being cut in fields of oat, representing a legend known as Devil's Mowing, the ominous title suggesting an unexplained otherworldly origin. By the late 1800s, crop circles were being discussed in detail in the highly respected Nature Journal. The appearance of these crop circles became prevalent in England in the 1970s and only grew more frequent through the 80s and 90s. To this day, crop circles appear with regularity all over the world. But what are they? These great masterpieces of mystery and intrigue. Where do they come from? And what could they mean? Could they really be from mysterious flying objects? From extraterrestrial visitors? At first, scientists tried to explain the formation of crop circles as the result of unusual wind patterns. Several scientists even suggested they were a result of the particularly vigorous sexual activity of hedgehogs. Then in 1991, an answer presented itself. It was all a hoax. Two men, Doug Bauer and his co-conspirator Dave Chorley, colloquially known as Doug and Dave, came forward and revealed that, in what started as a drunken prank, they had been the ones creating crop circles. They explained that they did so by using a stock stumper, quite simply a rope tied at both ends to a board, used by holding the rope, putting a foot on the board, and physically stomping the crops down in a circular pattern. Immediately, it was declared that the mystery had been solved, the magicians having revealed their magic trick. Unfortunately for those inherently dismissive of a so-called conspiracy theory like crop circles, it was not quite so simple. Shortly after Doug and Dave introduced the stock stomper to the world, one scientist ventured to actually study the stocks which had purportedly been stomped. His name was William Levengood, a well-respected biophysicist and the author of over 50 peer-reviewed papers and six patents. Curiously, in plants taken from the crop circle areas, Levengood found a series of significant anomalies, strangely elongated plant nodes, seed cavities totally devoid of seeds, and expulsion cavities blown open at the nodes. Obviously, these types of things do not happen to plants when someone steps on them with a board. In Levengood's own words, the affected plants have components which suggest the involvement of rapid air movement, ionization, electric fields, and transient high temperatures combined with an oxidizing atmosphere. Levengood's discoveries led some to speculate that crop circles could have been made by individuals using some sort of microwave emitter, which would superheat the stem of the plant and cause it to fall over. But then, another layer was added to the intrigue, thanks to a study on the soil where crop circles had appeared. Astoundingly, the study found that the clay minerals contained within the soil had somehow crystallized, a phenomenon previously only seen in sedimentary rock which had been exposed to massive geologic pressure over the course of hundreds or thousands of years. It made no scientific sense that this crystallization would be found under a crop circle. Even if the requisite geologic pressure had somehow existed, and even if it had somehow acted to form a crop circle, the pressure would have obliterated the crops, while if pressure was replaced by the kind of heat required to encourage crystallization, that is 600 to 800 degrees Celsius, for a period of many hours, the crops would surely have been incinerated. Perhaps it had been something else, something related to electric fields and transient high temperatures, as Levengood surmised. 
It is important to note that these characteristics studied by Levengood are not found at every crop circle site. That is to say, some crop circles are literally tramped down by a person with a rope and a board. But that's just the point. Some, not all. Even the most skeptical of scientists would likely admit that there are a number of crop circle sites exhibiting characteristics which defy modern scientific understanding. In other words, while crop circles were proven to be a hoax in the early 90s, since then, the scientific community has said, not so fast. And it goes far beyond the structure of the crops or the composition of the soil. In 1974, Famed American scientist Carl Sagan oversaw the broadcast of the so-called Arecibo message into space. The goal? To contact extraterrestrial life with the most powerful radio waves ever produced by humans. The broadcast included information about the Earth's location, the appearance and DNA of human beings, as well as core principles of our mathematics and science. It was an ambitious, if outlandish, project. After all, what chance was there really of receiving a response? What chance indeed? 27 years later, a crop circle appeared in Chilbolton, England, next to the UK's largest telescope and observatory, which appeared to be a depiction of the face on Mars photograph. This was interesting enough on its own, but days later, something even more mind-blowing appeared. There, in the same field, appeared a crop circle described as a dead ringer for Sagan's 1974 message. It was formatted in the same way and seemed to respond to the information originally broadcast into space, detailing a different solar system, the appearance of the sender, and information on non-human DNA. Some described it quite simply as the ultimate response we could have hoped for. But wait, if Sagan's message had received a response, who or what could have done such a thing? Could it really have been some sort of alien race? Some have suggested the answer to this question was revealed through the appearance of another crop circle in Italy in 2011. There in the small town of Porino, a crop circle emerged which depicted a seven-pointed star. Contained in the design was a code which seemed to identify its creator as somebody named Enki. This is not a random or inconsequential name. Enki is the name of an ancient Sumerian god, a precursor to Aquarius. More importantly, Enki was, according to some, the leader of an ancient group of aliens called the Anunnaki, who visited Earth long ago. Thinkers like Zechariah Sitchin and Eric von Daniken have asserted that these Anunnaki colonized Earth some 500,000 years ago, genetically engineering human beings as a slave race. Perhaps it is the Anunnaki who are now contacting humans, announcing through crop circles the impending return of Enki. As Sitchin has stated, the zodiacal cycle returns to exactly the same spot every 25,920 years. So, we are now leaving the age of Pisces. Enki was the prototype god of Aquarius. Whether this means that it is all going to happen again, that Enki is coming back, I don't know. There are a lot of signaling and signs that all point in that direction. If human beings were enslaved by the Anunnaki before, then why not again? However, there is another side to the story, another angle to the Anunnaki legend. Many believe that this alien race has in the past provided humans with advanced technology and knowledge, that this in fact explains seemingly impossible structures like the pyramids or Stonehenge. With this in mind, look again at the seven-pointed star crop circle, which appeared in Italy. As researcher Michael Lee Hill pointed out, in the world of geometry and frequency, a seven-pointed star is crucially related to 432 hertz. Consider a cymatic image of a frequency exactly four octaves below 432 hertz appears as a seven-pointed star identical to that found in Italy. 
Significantly, 432 Hertz is known as the magic number, the natural frequency of the universe. Because of this, it has been suggested that the appearance of a seven-pointed star crop circle is a coded message. But what sort of coded message? A prominent Native American elder named Bear Cloud has cryptically suggested when scientists learn that the seven-pointed star has a forward progression and recreates itself infinitely as a whole unit, there will be huge leaps in the progress of man. Meanwhile, Hill's research into the Italian crop circle produced a more concise message. Somebody is trying to tell us something. If I had to guess, it's to show that 432 hertz equals energy. Italy was not the first nor the last time it appeared that somebody was trying to tell us something through crop circles. In fact, some would say that over the years, crop circles have revealed many secrets. In the mid-afternoon on July 7, 1996, a commercial pilot was flying his normal route over the Stonehenge Monument in Wiltshire, England. This was not an unusual occurrence. Many companies offer aerial tours of Stonehenge to tourists. The pilot reached his destination and turned around, passing the same spot about 45 minutes later. What he saw stunned him. There, in the field, directly across the highway from Stonehenge, was a huge centipede-like geometric pattern, dozens, individual circles, which had not been there when he had flown over less than an hour prior. How is this possible, he wondered. Stonehenge security was on duty 24-7, and tourists were everywhere. Anyone walking into the field with an armful of equipment in broad daylight would surely have been spotted and stopped. Even more incredibly, a closer examination by experts revealed that the centipede-like pattern was not just any random design. In fact, it represented a mathematical pattern called the Julia set. This went far beyond the actions and abilities of hoaxers looking for a laugh. Whomever or whatever had created these crop circles possessed a deep understanding of complex mathematics. But the Julia set would only be the start, only the tip of the proverbial iceberg. In the years that followed, crop circles appeared in rapid succession which provided examples of advanced mathematics or complex physics. In 2010, a 300-foot design appeared in a field in England which, once decoded, revealed a mathematical formula called Euler's Identity, known as the most beautiful and profound mathematical equation in the world. Two years before that, a coded image had appeared in the same area which represented the first 10 digits of pi. But it goes back further. In 2000, NASA scientist Alan Holt visited Wiltshire, England, the location of many crop circle appearances, to examine the phenomenon. Tongue planted firmly in cheek, Holt put out the thought in a crop picture, somewhat as a test, but really a request, that he would like to see a crop pictogram appear, which could provide some insight into the direction he should pursue in his advanced transport and field physics research activities. Incredibly, two days later, in a field near him, Crop circles appeared which revealed a detailed diagram of a magnetic field near a bar magnet. Ask and ye shall receive, it appeared. In fact, between 1997 and 2009, no less than five crop circle appearances showed complex diagrams of twisted vortexes representing the side and top views of a magnetic field, while others displayed mechanical routers or the field lines of an electric charge. Then, crop circles appeared which revealed detailed blueprints for magnetic motors. What could this possibly mean, this continued appearance of complex mathematics and electromagnetic diagrams in crop circles around the world? For centuries, human scientists have suggested reaching out to intelligent life in the universe through mathematics. As far back as the 1800s, famed German mathematician Carl Gauss suggested that trees should be planted in the Siberian forest in a way which displayed the Pythagorean theorem, while at the same time, Austrian astronomer Joseph von Littrow suggested kerosene-filled trenches in the Sahara Desert displaying geometric shapes. 
If humans have come to this conclusion, then it would probably be safe to assume other forms of intelligent life have done so as well. Perhaps they have already tried just such a method. Could it be that crop circles are in fact a form of this extraterrestrial messaging, similar to a forest displaying the Pythagorean theorem? As early as 1991, in a book written by Alec Bartholomew entitled Crop Circles, Harbingers of World Change, the idea that crop circles could be messages from non-human intelligence was being discussed. Bartholomew asked, if crop circles were messages, what were they trying to convey? In the book, British historian and noted psychic Isabel Kingston professed that crop circles might contain a blueprint for a new form of energy that would one day be unraveled by scientists. It may have seemed far-fetched at the time, but after decades of increasingly complex mathematical patterns and electromagnetic diagrams appearing in crop circles, there are many who now believe Bartholomew and Kingston may have been onto something. Some assert that crop circles are extraterrestrial messages to humanity, blueprints for new futuristic technology designed to help humans move to the next level of their existence, that hidden within the diagrams of magnetic fields and motors are the secrets to a new form of unlimited energy. A particularly poignant example of this may have come in 2011 when a crop circle revealed the designs for a magnetic flywheel invented by self-taught American engineer Ed Leedskalen way back before World War II. Leedskalen and his flywheel would have been a totally unremarkable reference, but for the fact that he was the creator of Coral Castle, a monument in Florida made of over 1,000 tons of coral. Little is known about how Leedskalen constructed this monument. Apparently he did it by himself and in the dead of night. When asked for an explanation, he said, I understand the laws of weight and leverage and know the secrets of people who built the pyramids at Giza in Egypt long ago. With this cryptic answer, the speculation became that Leedskalen had used some sort of magnetic levitating device to move the stone. Speculation expanded further when, after Leedskalen's death, strange remnants of what appeared to be an electromagnetic device were found in a chamber beneath Coral Castle, wires wrapped around bottles, piles of magnets, and chains. Could it be that Leedskalen had discovered the secrets of electromagnetic energy, known previously by those who constructed the pyramids as he suggested, and used it to create Coral Castle? And if so, is it possible a diagram for his magnetic wheel appeared as a crop circle to draw attention to this fact? Similar questions can be asked of the many other examples over the past few decades of crop circles revealing magnetic motors and diagrams. In fact, they are being asked. Since at least 2008, Italian inventor Umberto Baudo has been using crop circles as inspiration and blueprint for an invention he believes will provide unlimited free energy. Baudo asserts that crop circles are the maximum expression of a message because through an image, you can communicate much more than with words without any doubt, especially if the message is addressed to someone that does not speak our language. And what is the message which is being communicated in these crop circles? Quite simply, according to Baudo, since 2008, I realized that it is absolutely possible to generate free energy to all of the planet. Baudo's work has led him to experiment with magnetic motors and systems of centrifugal force, entering uncharted territory and working against conventional wisdom and a powerful status quo, not to mention the laws of thermodynamics. In 2012, at a small meeting in Modena, Italy, Baudo said, Crop circles. The media and science treat this phenomenon subtly, but it is of great importance for humanity. Only those who study it seriously can understand that it is not a joke. After long and exhausting study, I can demonstrate that many of these crop patterns are not man-made. Since the beginning of my research, I noticed there were technical drawings which show us new ways to produce free energy. I have been trying to reproduce those patterns for a long time, using permanent magnets with no result. Then I realized a new way to develop those mechanisms and I will show you how they work with the help of a simulator. What he would show were complex systems based on diagrams obtained from crop circles 
which used centrifugal force. Baudo tested these systems using computer simulations, which allowed him to rotate shapes at high speed and examine what happened to energy generation, both with and without the variables of gravity, magnets, springs, and chains. He asserts he has created a model which continues to build momentum even after the engine is turned off. Unlimited energy. In his own words, the main key to understand it is fundamentally one, the centrifugal force, just like that. As we move into the third decade of the 21st century, it is far from just Umberto Bado who is working on something like this. Across the world, scientists and inventors are working with the complex diagrams seen in crop circles in pursuit of free energy, futuristic transportation, and more. Of course, many questions still remain. Why, with such seemingly incredible potential, are the messages contained in crop circles mostly ignored? The circles themselves portrayed in mainstream popular culture as elaborate hoaxes. One answer to this question can perhaps be found by examining who stands to lose the most with the discovery of a source of unlimited free energy. Oil and gas companies, the industrial juggernauts which control the global economy. But economics aside, it must be asked, if science agrees that some crop circles can't be explained by any earthly phenomenon, then where did they come from? If they are some sort of extraterrestrial messages, then what are they trying to say? And just what might these messages allow us to achieve? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you're new, hit subscribe and the bell next to it for future notifications.